Welcome back to the News at 10. In about a week from now, 21 delegates from across Africa, led by President Muhammadu Buhari, will be attending the UK-Africa Investment Summit in London. Described as a once-in-a-generation opportunity, the delegation will have the attention of 300 British companies looking to invest in Africa's private sector. During a press conference in Lagos, the British Deputy High Commissioner to Lagos, Ms. Harriet Thompson, said the UK wants to be Africa's partner of choice and that investing in Africa, especially Nigeria's non-oil sector, would help meet the needs of infrastructure, economic diversity and job employment in the private sector. The CEO of the Nigeria Investment Promotion Council, Mrs. Yewan De Sadiku, says a catalogue of private companies in Nigeria will be launched at the summit to guide investors on their choices. Investors need better infrastructure. They cite this as their biggest obstacle to doing business in Nigeria. Real, reliable estimates put the figure that's needed at around $36 billion a year for Nigeria to reach its potential. That's in transport, in energy access, and in sanitation. Infrastructure needs more direct FDI. It can only be paid for by building revenue resources. And the best way to do that is to build tax revenues from sectors other than oil, including agriculture, manufacturing, and mineral mining. The Africa Investment Summit offers Nigeria the chance to make its pitch to leaders of around 300 UK businesses, including our very top companies, as well as other companies from right across the continent of Africa. For investors who are not familiar with the country, the guide also gives a sense of costs um, for certain things in Nigeria, energy, property, land acquisition, and the like. Um, telecom services, transportation, you know, and the flights available in and out of Nigeria. We talk about what it will take to establish a business in Nigeria, again, so investors get a better feel. There's a section on taxation and incentives. Um, and then there's a short section on Nigerian investment promotion. And, uh, and at the end, if you need additional information, the agencies and the parties to contact. Let's take some more business news. And here's Bissi Adebayo. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Welcome to Business News. The Secretary General of the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, Mr. Mohamed Barkindo, is confident that the additional production adjustment of 500 barrels per day will maintain stability in the crude oil market in 2020. Mr. Barkindo was speaking on the sidelines of the ongoing International Petroleum Technology Conference holding in Saudi Arabia. He also revealed the implementation of the Declaration of Cooperation by member countries in the last three years. The decisions that we took on the 5th and the 6th of December in Vienna with our non-OPEC partners uh, has just kicked in uh, on the 1st of January. Uh, we remain confident that the full and timely implementation of the additional 500,000 barrels a day uh, bringing the total adjustment uh, to 1.7 million barrels a day, uh, including also the voluntary uh, over conformity of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia of another 400,000 barrels a day, bringing the sum total to 2.1 million barrels a day, will uh, keep the market in check and maintain stability through the first and the second quarter of 2020. The Declaration of Cooperation Partners have uh, uh, marked uh, the third year anniversary of the implementation of the DOC, uh, which uh, started uh, 1st of January 2017. And in these three years, uh, we have learned quite a lot, very good lessons. Uh, the bond between participating countries has become uh, very strong, including, of course, uh, personal friendships across capitals and nations. Uh, so we are fairly confident going forward that this partnership has come to stay for the good of OPEC, for the good of OPEC, OPEC and non-OPEC, as well as consuming countries and the global economy. 
The Nigerian Stock Exchange will be proceeding to the next phase of its plans to go public, which includes seeking formal approval from authorized city members to finalize the agreement. The chief executive of the NSC, Mr. Oscar Nyema, who made this known at the annual review for 2019 and outlook for 2020, hints that the exchange will develop new strategic partnerships to deliver better products and services. From in our aspiration to become a more agile and demutualized exchange, and pursuant to the SEC's no objection letter, which we received in December of 2019, we will proceed to next steps, which includes seeking formal approval from our members on our demutualization scheme. We are committed to continually provide clarity on the demutualization process to our various stakeholders through regular engagements. While keeping an eye on the strategic intent of the exchange post demutualization, we will continue to leverage a vast network of stakeholders in addition to developing new strategic partnerships with the goal of delivering better products and services to our customers. As African champions, we will maintain momentum in executing our stra corporate strategy in our efforts to elevate the prominence of African financial markets. Meanwhile, Nigeria's stock market begins the second full trading week of January on a high as the NSC's main index jumps towards the 30,000 level. Here's Daniel at Shubawali with today's figures. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The share price of MTN Nigeria helped the stock market begin the second full trading week of January with positive sentiment as the NSC's main index gallops towards the 30,000 higher level. The telecoms giant, which is still riding on the withdrawal of the $2 billion tax demand case by the Attorney General of the Federation, recorded a 10% increase on its share price, which contributed largely to the 117 billion naira gain recorded today. This comes as investors intensified profit-taking on key components from the industrial goods, banking, as well as the consumer goods sector of the NSC. Meanwhile, market breadth ended with a negative margin of 18 losers led by 9.95% load shed on Cadbury's share price against 16 losers, including Nigeria Police Microfinance Bank. Overall volume of shares transactions for the day stands at 348.23 million units in more than 5,300 deals. And these were mostly driven by the shares of Access Bank, UBA, and Zenit Bank. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Shuboeli. Many thanks, Tenny. And across the globe, stocks resumed the rally that started last week and made news that the U.S. will remove China from a list of currency manipulating countries. Let's see today's numbers. <laughs> And that's it on Business News. Thank you for watching. I am BC at Debayo. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Lou BC. And on the foreign scene, the Queen has agreed to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex spending what she calls a period of transition in Canada and the UK. This comes after a crucial meeting between senior royals at Sandringham following Prince Harry and Meghan's announcement about stepping back from their duties. She says she's entirely supportive of the desire for a new role, but would have preferred them to remain full-time working royals. Simon Pusey has more international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. A volcano in the Philippines has begun spewing lava as authorities warn that a hazardous eruption is possible within hours or days. 
In this extraordinary time-lapse video, you can see plumes of ash and steam rising from Tau volcano. The column of ash reportedly rose as high as 15 kilometers into the sky, forcing the cancellation of 172 flights in and out of Manila's international airport on Sunday. The volcano's activity has triggered the mass evacuation of 8,000 people from the area. Lightning only added to the drama for people filming the Philippines' second most active volcano. Situated on an island in the middle of a lake, it is one of the world's smallest volcanoes and has recorded at least 34 eruptions in the past 450 years. Drone footage showed a thick layer of ash covering buildings, roads and trees in Batangas province. Authorities in the province have declared a state of calamity signifying a major disruption. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has said he will seek justice for those killed on board a Ukrainian passenger plane downed by Iran. Photographs of the dead stood on the stage where mourners had placed rose petals and candles. Mr Trudeau spoke in Edmonton, Alberta at a vigil for the 57 Canadians killed in the disaster. He promised to pursue answers from Iran, which admitted its military shot down the plane in error, killing all 176 people on board. We will continue to work with our partners to ensure that a full, transparent investigation is conducted. We will not rest until there are answers. We will not rest until there is justice. Iran has responded to criticism that they illegally arrested the British ambassador in Tehran by saying he was interfering with internal matters. Rob McCare says he was paying his respect to those who died in the crash of the Ukrainian airliner, which was accidentally shot down by the Iranian military last week. In a tweet, he said, Thanks for the many goodwill messages. Can I confirm I wasn't taking part in any demonstrations? Went to an event advertised as a vigil for victims of the PS752 tragedy. Normal to want to pay respects. Some of the victims were British. I left after five minutes when some started chanting. Detained half an hour after leaving the area, arresting diplomats is of course illegal in all countries. However, the Iranian government has another version of events. This action of the British ambassador was totally unprofessional and unacceptable, and by summoning him to the foreign ministry, we have communicated our protest to the ambassador and the government of the UK. The UK has a very unpleasant report card on interfering in Iranian internal matters. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and the Turkish Foreign Minister have met in Moscow ahead of peace talks between Libya's warring rival leaders. The Turkish Defence Minister and his Russian counterpart were also among the delegates at the roundtable talks. The Libya talks come after a ceasefire in the country initiated by Turkey and Russia, which saw a lull in heavy fighting and airstrikes on Sunday, although both factions accused each other of violating the truce as skirmishes continued around the capital Tripoli. The Labour Party here in the UK have nominated a shortlist of five MPs in the race to be the leader of the party. Sir Keir Starmer is the front-runner to take the top job, with Jess Phillips, Lisa Nandy, Rebecca Long-Bailey and Emily Thornbury also meeting the threshold needed to get onto the ballot paper. However, Clive Lewis failed to get the necessary support of 22 MPs and MEPs. Jeremy Corbyn's successor will be announced on the 4th of April. He is standing down after Labour lost its fourth general election in a row last month. And finally, a man has been rescued after surviving more than three weeks in the Alaskan wilderness with little food and shelter. State authorities rescued 30-year-old Tyson Steele after a fire destroyed his remote cabin. He lived on canned foods that survived the blaze and made a basic tent out of debris in the sub-zero temperatures. Authorities only found Mr. Steele after concerned family members asked them to check on him. He had written an SOS message in the snow by the remains of his house. And that's your international news around the world in five. That's amazing. Thanks a lot, Simon. Still ahead on the news at 10, barely a week after his sack as aimed by head coach, Usman Abdallah returns to the Nigeria Professional Football League as Vicky Tourist Technical Advisor. Stay with us, please. <laughs>